Well, aren't y'all thankful that all our sins have been forgiven? I tell you what, praise God for that. And thanks God for the hope that we have in Jesus Christ in 2023. Don't y'all agree? Well, Happy New Year! Happy New Year. I mean, how many of y'all stayed up till the, till the uh, ball dropped, you know? Anybody see the guitar drop? You know, I stayed up to the ball drop, but it was 11 o'clock. I thought, you know, you know, I watched the Eastern time, thought, man, I'm preaching tomorrow. I need to get to sleep, you know. Oh, but anyway, what a joy to be back at Lone Oak and just uh, thank Roger for the privilege of being able to come and praying for your church still. And uh, just pray that God will just bless you in 2023. And uh, what a great advice for the new year. You know, we're from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 21. And uh, so the title of the sermon, Advice for the New Year. I thought that was appropriate for January the 1st, 2023. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Here, look at these top 10, 50, top 10 resolutions I found on the Internet. Now, these are uh, there in Google search, and, but they said, how many of y'all made resolutions for the new year? We got some out there. Well, if you made one of these, just raise your hand if you want to. But these were the top 10 New Year's resolutions that Americans uh, made according to this Google article. Uh, spend more time with family and friends. Anybody want to do that? I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, that's not a bad one, is it? Spend more time with family and friends. Some of you, you might hope that they don't make that resolution. But um, get fit. Now, hey, come on. I, I need that one. Get fit. You know, that's definitely in mind when I think about it. Tame the bulge. Let's don't talk about that, but that certainly needs to be there. Quit smoking. You know, that's, not, that's a good resolution. Enjoy life more. I mean, I think that's a good thing, isn't it? Quit drinking. Any, I mean, quit drinking. That's a good one. Get out of debt. Get out of debt. I could do that if somebody wants to give me some more money, by the way. <laughs> All right, I'll be glad. I'll tell you precisely the amount I need to get out of debt if you come up and talk to me. Uh, learn something new. Not a bad one. Anybody want to learn something new in 2023? Help others. You know, help others. That's a good one, too. Help others. And then last but not least, get organized. Now, I would tell you, if you're not organized, uh, some of you say, I never have. Why well, start now, right? Oh, I'm a very organized person. That's uh that's just something I do, but I do, you know, I do like for people to be organized. So if you're not organized, get organized. Happy New Year. I tell you what. You know, I want you to look at those, though, when you look at that. And did you notice that none of those top 10 resolutions, according to that Google article, had nothing to do with God? None of them have anything to do with spiritual improvement. None of them have anything to do with Jesus. Top 10 resolutions you Americans are making. You know, I would just say to you that God is, was not included. You know, and that's the way it is with many people, isn't it? And I mean, you know people like that. God's not included in their life. They don't include God or Christ in the picture of their life. But as we think about today's sermon, advice for the new year, let me just suggest that the Lord should be included in every aspect of our lives. He should be included in our marriages. He should be included in our dating if you're not married. He should be included in our family. He should be included in our children's life. He should be included in our work. He should be included in our play. He should be included in our pleasure. He should be included in everything. We need to make some good resolutions, but really commitments to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and what we're going to do this year to be the best Christians that we can be so that we can reach a lost and dying world that needs to know Jesus as their Savior. That don't have the hope, that can't sing, all my hope is in Jesus. All my hope. In Jesus. Let's make some resolutions this year. I think the Apostle Paul gives us some pretty good advice, and we're going to look at three of them today. If you got your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter 5 there, verses 15 through 20. I'm reading from the Christian Standard Version. Let's stand in honor reading God's Word today. Starting in verse 15 of Ephesians chapter 5. Here's three things that Paul's going to tell us that if we want to have a great year, if we want to include Jesus in our year, these is just some advice that the Apostle Paul gives us 
for making 2023 better. Starting in verse 15 of chapter 5 of Ephesians. Pay careful attention then to how you live. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Making the most of the time because the days are evil. So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless living, but be filled by the Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Singing and making music with your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 21, submitting to one another in the fear of Christ. Dear Lord, thank you for the, your word. Thank you for the fact that, Lord, your word gives us truths and advice that we can apply to our lives. Thank you, Lord, that our, your word gives us hope and gives us peace and gives us joy and tells us about Jesus. We love you. I pray, Lord, that you would bless this church and bless every one of us that know you as their Savior in 2023. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. You know, as I think about it, the first piece of advice I think the Apostle Paul gives us there is to walk carefully. To walk carefully. I think we see that in verses 15 to 17. Walk carefully. I mean, the scripture I read says, pay careful attention. I mean, that's pretty clear. Pay careful attention. So as we go about 2023, pay careful attention. Walk carefully. You know, the New International Version says, be very careful how you live. So as we think about 2023, part of the first advice that Paul would give us is just walk carefully. Pay careful attention to how you live in 2023. You know, because people are watching. People, and we need to represent our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not as unwise, he goes on to say, but as wise. You see, we don't have to walk unwisely. We can walk carefully. We can walk wisely because we have the scripture that tells us how to do it. We have individuals that can speak into our lives and help us be the best Christians and the best people in 2023 that we can be. Why? So that other people can know our Savior, can see Jesus in us. Walk carefully, Paul would say. Walk carefully. Be careful. Pay careful attention how you walk. Well, how do we do that? I think Paul tells us how to do that right here. And he goes on, he says, how do you do that? He says, pay careful attention to how you walk, making the most of the time. I kind of like the uh, New King James or the King James verse says, redeeming the time there. You know, as we think about 2023, we're all starting right here today. You know, we got 365 days. Let's make the most of every opportunity that we have in 2023. Let's walk carefully. Let's pay careful attention to every day matters when we're serving the Jesus as our Savior and Lord. Every day matters. Walk carefully. Redeem the time. Make the most of every opportunity. Here's a paraphrase for you. Be careful in living. Be careful in the way you live. Be careful, be wise, be careful with your time, which is God's time, and don't contribute to evil, be wise, be wise. Let's be wise, let's make the most of every opportunity. You know, there's an old Chinese proverb that says this, I think I put it right up here, opportunity has a forelock so you can seize it when you meet it. Once it is passed, you cannot seize it. Again, now how many of y'all watched those ball games last night? I mean, y'all watched any of those national championship or playoff games last night? I mean, those were pretty cool. They were all entertaining. I didn't care who won. Kind of glad the SEC still represented it in the final game. But I didn't really care. They were very entertaining games. But you think about those games. I think it's a good, oper- a good example of these right here. Opportunity has a four lot so you can seize it when you meet it. I mean, Ohio State played an incredible ball game but they missed their opportunity to play in the national championship and it's not coming back it's over 
Tennessee, of course, blew it against South Carolina and Georgia. And we could have been there too. But the point comes, I think that's just a good, simple illustration of that. We have the opportunity. Let's make sure that we're making the most of every time. And walking carefully and taking advantage of all the opportunities God's going to give us. I mean, just think, in 2023, you're going to, get to, you're going to meet new people. You're going to have new visitors come to the church. You're not, you're, the pastor search committee, I promise you, they're working on a new pastor. Take advantage of every opportunity to make sure that Jesus is lifted up. Walk carefully. Walk carefully. Paul would say, redeem the time. Redeem the time. Another thing he goes on, he says, walk carefully by understanding what the will of the Lord is. Uh, walk carefully by understanding what the will of the Lord is. I mean, seek the Lord's will in all things. We all want to know God's will. But in 2023, let's make sure that we're trying to understand what is God's will. The decisions, all of us this year, we're going to be forced making all kinds of choices, aren't we? Some of them are small choices. I mean, like, am I really going to eat that pie or not eat that pie? Yeah. All right. I mean, you know, if I look like you, I might eat it. But see, I need to say no, all right? I need to learn to say no, you know. Um, but some of them are big choices, aren't they? And so we need to make sure that we understand what the will of the Lord is. I mean, the Scriptures tells us, Paul says, that we would understand. He goes on, he says, don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. I mean, God wants you not just to know his will, but to understand his will. And we can understand that if we're spending time in God in prayer, if we're making the kind of resolutions and commitments that we need to make as Christians, we're spending time in the Word, we're spending time in prayer, we're spending time focused on Jesus and not just ourselves, we can understand God's will. He'll, he will reveal His will to us. Warren Wiersbe put it like this. He says, if God gave you a mind, then He expects you to use it. This means that learning His will involves gathering facts, examining them, weighing them, and praying for his wisdom. In other words, God does not want us to simply know his will. He wants us to understand his will. And how does he do that? He expects us to use the mind that he's given us. Gather those facts when you're making those choices. Analyze those facts in 2023. Examine them, weigh them, pray, and God will reveal to you his will. His will. He will do that. So let's walk carefully this year. Paul tells us to walk carefully. You know, my daughter this week, she went and had her take her car in for, it had a recall on it. She's got a Toyota RAV4, and so it had a recall. So she took it to the Toyota dealer so they could fix the car, you know, get it repaired. I think it was a front, a mat or something, driver's mat that had come loose. I'm not really sure what it was. But you know what? Here we are looking back on 2022. It's gone. 2022 is gone. But some of us would like a recall on 2022. I mean, some of us, we look back and we realize the opportunities that we missed and the mistakes that we made. Well, let's just make today and allow the new year to be an opportunity. Give yourself a recall. All right, in regard to your lives and your church, I mean, sometimes we make the wrong decision. But I want you to know that Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians 3.13 to forget those things which are behind and reach for to those things which are above. You know, the thing about it is God wants us to move forward. He doesn't want us to live in the past. God wants you to. He knows we sometimes mess up. Sometimes we make bad decisions. But you know what? He just wants us to move forward in 2023. Walk carefully. So that next year when you look back, you don't think, Oh, I, I didn't make as many as bad decisions this year as I did last year, did I? God can be with us. God wants you to understand his perfect will. Be careful. Be careful in the way you live. Use your time for the Lord. Seek the Lord in life. Serve the Lord no matter what else you do. Walk carefully in 2023. Paul would also tell us to walk thoughtfully. 
walk thoughtfully. And uh, uh, this is an interesting scripture when you think about it. It comes in there and he says, so don't be foolish in verse 17, but understand what the Lord's will is and don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless living, but be filled by the Spirit. Be filled by the Spirit. Walk thoughtfully. Do not be drunk with wine in which is dispensation, but be filled by the Spirit. You know, so we can walk thoughtfully by being filled with the Spirit of God. Now, you know, one of the things that as I was studying this scripture and I was just thinking about it, Paul drew the contrast between how the God of Ephesus, this was written to the Ephesians, how the God of Ephesus is served and how the God of heaven is served. You see, uh, Ephesus was a center of pagan worship and ritual. In the Ephesian culture, they worshiped Bacchus, the god of wine and drunken orgies. They believed that to commune with their god, the god of wine and drunken orgies, they believed that they had to uh, get drunk. And in this drunken state, they could determine the will of their god and determine how best to serve him. And so Paul was saying, no. He's saying, no. He drew the contrast between how the God of Ephesus is served and how the God of heaven is served. With the God of heaven, you don't get drunk with wine. Rather, you are filled with the Spirit. And that's what he's saying here today. So, as we walk thoughtfully, let's walk thoughtfully by being filled with the Spirit of God. You see, being filled with the Spirit is best understood as a command for the believer to yield himself to the illuminating, convicting, and empowering work of the Holy Spirit. If we want to have a great year in 2023, let's be filled with the Spirit uh, by walking thoughtfully. Walking thoughtfully. You know, let's understand God. Here's just some key scriptures. I was just looking at some other scriptures that, that, that kind of talk about this. It talk about 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Paul says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Fill with the Spirit. Whatever you do, whether you, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Galatians 5, 13, he wrote, you, my brothers, were called to be free. But not, do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. In 2023, let's don't indulge our sinful nature. Let's serve one another in love. In Galatians 6, 2, he says, bear one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. Now, as we look back on 2022, for those that had lost loved ones or had things that, you know, aren't you glad that there was somebody there that the church, a life group, came around side of you and loved you. Let's do that for people in 2023. Let's bear their burdens and let's fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians 6, 9 and 10, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. I mean, I have to remind myself that one. I mean, you can get weary in doing good. You're doing the right things, the best things, but sometimes you're not seeing the results, and you get weary in doing good. But don't give up. Don't give up. Don't stop coming to church. Don't stop reading your Bible. Don't stop praying. Don't stop. Don't get weary in doing good, for at the proper time you'll reap a harvest. We never know when God's going to show up. We never know when we're going to be reading the scriptures. And it's going to be that, whoa, wow, moment. We never know when we're going to come to church and we're going to hear uh, that sermon that just says, boom. And God just really speaks to you. Don't get weary in doing good. Keep praying. Keep reading. Keep attending. Keep sharing the gospel. Don't give up on those people that you love, that don't know Jesus, that you would love to be here with you today, that you're concerned about that because we know there's a heaven and a hell. Don't get weary. Continue to pray. 
Continue to share. Continue to walk carefully and to walk thoughtfully in front of them so that they see Jesus in you. Don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. I think this is another good one. Matthew says, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus was beside, Love your lo- the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on to these two commandments. So I think that Jesus was here. He would say, how do you walk thoughtfully? Love the Lord your God with all your heart. With all your soul. With all your mind. And love your neighbor as you would love yourself. If we all walk thoughtfully like that, it's going to be a great year in 2023. Last point I think that Apostle Paul gives us today is that we are to walk thankfully in 2023. Let's walk thankfully in 2023. I mean, uh, it's pretty simple there. I mean, he goes in verses 19 and 20. He says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your heart to the Lord. Give thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give, walk thankfully. Walk thankfully. Walk thankfully in 2023. You see, a person who is spirit-filled will speak. They will make music. They will give thanks. They will will submit to others. That's what that final verse says. They're submitting to one another in the fear of Christ because it's not, it's more important that that we're representing God and we're trying to win an argument. We're submitting to one another. But walk thankfully. So uh, uh, the Christian can walk thankfully by Giving thanks always. I mean, we saw that. You were here at Thanksgiving. I mean, you might have sung that, you know, but give thanks always. I mean, not everything is something that's joyful, but we can give thanks that God is there with us, that we have people that love us. Give thanks always. And by give thanks for everything. You see, I believe our light shines for the Lord when we are thankful. Walk thankfully. Walt, thankfully, you know, um, there's a survey that was done, and it, and it said that most of the people in this survey just said, you know, that people are ruder today than they were in the 60s and 70s. Um, they're just ruder today than they were 20 and 30 years ago. I mean, would y'all, y'all might agree with that. I mean, people, our society, we're just, we're, we're, they're ruder. Are you rude? I mean, sometimes we can all be rude, can't we? I mean, um, sometimes I find myself forgetting to say thank you, don't y'all? I mean, if you look at the scriptures, I mean, those Jesus healed the ten lepers, but only one came back to say thanks. We can all be rude. We can all fail to say thanks. We can all fail to sing. We can all fail to give glory and praise to God. Take credit. Shame on us for being forgetful and unpolite. Because our light shines for the Lord when we are thankful. When other people see that we're thankful, when other people see we're praising God in the midst of trials, you know what? Where the other people see Jesus in us. You know, complaining doesn't change a thing, does it? It doesn't change a thing. I mean, Psalm 77, 3 says, I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. I mean, complaining doesn't change a thing. But you know what? If you would give thanks, it would change. Give thanks in everything. Give thanks always. Your spirit will be lifted up. You'll feel the presence of God in your life. Paul said in Philippians 2.13, Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. You see, let's walk thankfully in 2023. Let's let God be seen in us at all times. So that the world may know our Jesus. So that the world may want our Jesus. See, he came at Christmas. 
He died at Easter. He brought us gifts of joy and love and peace and hope that the world don't know. Why? Because God is with us. He's Emmanuel. And that person, that baby that we celebrate at Christmas will be with us all in 2023 because he is Emmanuel. Let's walk thankfully in 2023. You know, I wish I could have called my parents and asked them, you know, well, Dad, what's your New Year's resolution? But Dad passed away in 2018. And Mom passed away in 2016. But if you walked up, uh, there was one illustration that said this. It said, I called my parents up and I wish them a happy New Year. And my dad answered the phone and I said, well, Dad... What's your New Year's resolution? And I asked him to make your mother as happy as I can all year. Maybe that's yours if you're a husband. Then he asked his mom, he said, uh, Mom, what's your New Year's resolution? To see that your dad keeps his resolution. <laughs> all right. I wish I could ask my parents that. But here's what I want. God would certainly like for you to make a commitment to take the advice of Paul and to walk carefully in 2023. To walk thoughtfully in 2023. To walk thankfully in 2023. I believe if we do this, people will see Jesus in us. And they'll want our Jesus. And it's the only hope that they have. Is to know our Jesus. Let's do our part in 2023 to bring people to Jesus. Advice for the new year. You know, we're going to go into a time of invitation. We're going to sing, Come As You Are, to worship. I think that's a great song for us to conclude our service with today. Come as you are to worship. You know, God doesn't want you to be somebody you're not. He loves you just the way you are. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, there's no better day than January the 1st of 2023 to accept Jesus as his Savior. Brother Philip and, my, and me will be down here to receive you and to tell you about Jesus. Maybe you're here today, and I know Brother Roger's not here, and the church is looking for a pastor, but they'll get one. They'll get a good one. Keep praying for the pastor search committee. Um, but if you don't have a church, today's a great day to decide in 2023 I'm going to place my membership right here at Lone Oak Baptist Church, and I'm going to make a difference in this community so that this church can be all that God wants it to be. That'll be part of the invitation today. Maybe you're here today and you just want to come to the altar. What a better day than to start January the 1st than bringing your family up here and just kneeling at the altar and saying, God, I, help me to walk thoughtfully and help me to walk carefully and help me to walk thankfully in 2023. Help me to be the Christian that you want me to be. Maybe you need to come and ask for prayer. Brother Philip and me will be here. Whatever God's calling you to do, do it. Let's come as we are to worship. Dear Lord, I love you and I praise you. Thank you for the privilege to be here today to read from your word. Thank you for the Apostle Paul for using him and others to leave us your word of God that we can know your will. Lord, we love you. I pray that whatever you want to do today, you'll do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand. Lay 